The theme that plays through the story of our nation, like the chorus oft repeated of a wonderful song. Unity, a more perfect union. Standing together with a common cause and shared vision to obtain the ideal. The shining example, that is what was behind the Purple Heart in 1782. In this country, earn glory and be recognized for it. While many may think of Mount Vernon as just a living history museum dedicated to preserving the legacy of Washington the farmer and kind of showing his life outside of the presidency, it's also, we do a lot more than that here. For the past five years, we've been holding Purple Heart ceremonies. Today, I'll be meeting with Colonel Gordon Sumner, who is the recipient of the Purple Heart Medal himself. And he's going to talk to us about the history and the legacy behind the medal and a little bit about the ceremony as well. On August 7, 1782, George Washington created the Badge of Military Merit, which was an award to be given to regular soldiers as higher ranking officers were the only ones to traditionally receive accolades. This gesture and recognition by Washington revealed yet another humanistic layer to the founder of our country. After the Revolutionary War, the Badge of Military Merit that was designed by General Washington fell out of favor with the, with the Army. Nobody understands exactly why, but it was never used again after the Revolutionary War. But in 1932, General MacArthur, when he was the Chief of Staff of the Army, re what he did was he then revised the Badge of Military Merit and designed what we now know as the Purple Heart Medal. And the reason it was done in 1932 on August 7th was to commemorate the 200th birth date of General Washington. People who have heard of the Purple Heart Medal to me, don't understand the criteria of the awarding of the Purple Heart. They think it's like every other medal that we've had in their military, which is usually given for meritorious service, for outstanding achievement, something like that. The only way that you can get the Purple Heart merit is you have to have been either wounded or killed in combat. The leadership, the dedication, service to country, the sacrifice that General Washington himself had for what he did during the Revolutionary War and his service as president after the war, is directly in line with what happens when somebody is awarded the Purple Heart Medal. Well, this memorial was actually established in August 7, 1998. We felt it was important that the medal be recognized here at the home of, of the President. What does it mean to you for this ceremony to take place at Mount Vernon? Well, it means a lot. It's very important to us, especially those who are Purple Heart recipients and member of the military or the Purple Heart, to have this linkage with Mount Vernon and that it's a joint effort to do the things that we really wanted to do when we set off with this type of ceremony five years ago this year. Then also educate the population on the Purple Heart Medal itself and what it really means, not only just in the vernacular of the United States and our award system, but also what it means to somebody when they are a recipient of that medal and that people can acknowledge the sacrifice that those individuals have done for their country in being able to be a recipient of the Purple Heart Medal. The ceremony will kick off at 10.10 in the morning on the 7th of August with some music provided by the U.S. Marine Corps Band's Brass Quintet. And then at 10.30 we'll have the posting of the colors by the Joint Armed Forces Color Guard. We have General Washington that will be there to talk about um, the Revolutionary War days and his leadership as the Commander-in-Chief. And additionally, we're going to have a very special guest speaker, a Captain Flo Groberg, who's a captain retired in the United States Army. Uh, captain Groberg is not only a Purple Heart recipient, but he's also a Medal of Honor recipient, our nation's highest honor for valor. What I have here common to many of you is my Purple Heart badge. The Purple Heart means something went wrong. The Purple Heart usually means that if you're lucky enough to come home, that maybe your friends didn't come home. It is not something that I would have ever attest to as an accomplishment. It's a reality. It's a reality of our nation's finest individuals who are willing to put their lives on the line to go out there and serve our greater cause, which is our country. I've had the opportunity to serve with young men and women who decided to put on the same uniform the exact same way I put it on every morning with the same mindset 
which is today I will do my job to the best of my ability. I will never allow complacency to step in because if it does, it means that some of my friends might die. And to all of our combat veterans, I believe that you would say the same thing. In combat, the last few words is your own life. But the most precious and important thing that you can do is be the right type of individual at that specific moment for your brothers and sisters. What does the award mean to you personally? For me personally, it, I can't really put it into words, but I can honestly say that I believe that 100% of those who are recipients of the Purple Heart Medal never wanted to get the Purple Heart Medal uh, because of the criteria to get it. Uh, but the fact is we do have it. And so now that we are members, it's really around what do we want to do with it and what does it mean? And that's why we have the military or the Purple Heart because that's the one military veterans organization that none of us, when we joined the military, had planned on joining. And now that we're in, we have one thing in common, unlike any other military organization, where we're all recipients of that having been in combat and having been wounded. Well, I came in during the Vietnam era and then served during Grenada. I was still on active duty during uh, Desert Shield, Desert Storm. I served with the British Army as well. I'm very honored to have been part of the British Army Air Corps during the IRA time frames. And then uh, when I retired in 1997, um, I got out before the, the current conflicts are going on.